Hey guys, Matt. Um, this is my truck driver shirt, it looks like. <laughs> Somebody tuning in is going to go, this this truck driver is going to tell me about the nature of reality? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, first, before, I want to talk about the eclipse. And um, for all us reality junkies, it, it's we get away from it too often. I mean, it is the starting point, the middle point, and the ending point. It should be of everything we do or consider or ponder or investigate we stray from the eclipse and it's everything um, we try to figure out the nature of reality over here but forget about the eclipse it just it's it's not the elephant in the room it's like the elephant times a billion in the room so um, before I do that um, I just want to bitch at YouTube Google can you believe uh, just two minutes I'll get right into it but can you believe that those bastards um, I, I was filming outside at my park, and I had the radio on, or or, or my uh, my whatever was on, and it was uh, the song was fr from a cool new band uh, called uh, new to me called Yellow Days, Yellow Days, D A Y S, a blonde-haired kid from the UK uh, who was in Philly uh, about a, about a month ago, and I opened the door and I got in, and the song was playing in the car. And for 20 seconds, YouTube, Google picked up on that and smacked my, my, my video as a copy. I was using copyrighted material and then put an ad on it. I mean, really? Now, the algorithm to me is so sophisticated. If it would have been me playing my ukulele, I don't think it would have. It knew what song it was. It knew. I mean, it, it knows. It knows when you've been sleeping. It knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. It's just scary. Uh, it's also sick. And just to get into a car where a radio is playing, they're going to slap an ad. Those greedy pigs. Oh, you know, let's just end it with this. Not the video, just the segment that, you know, people at Google YouTube and, you know, the, the masters of this world or even the minions that contribute to it, there are consequences. This, this, this life, this existence has consequences. Readily apparent to you and me, whether uh, you're a Christian by traditional sense or not, this, the meaning of this life is to understand that this life has meaning and there are consequences for fucking people over. Metaphysical consequences. Uh, probably that extend, most likely that extend, far beyond this lifetime. So keep doing what you're doing to all of us. There'll never be a karma to pay, right? There'll never be any consequence. Well, yes, there will be. Yes, there will be. Monsters. These people are monsters. And most of the executives there, they're not in on it. They go home and with their Porsches in the driveway and their three beach homes, they sleep well at night, don't realize they're fucking over anybody there will be consequences for those people as well not it's not some threat i'm talking about metaphysical consequences associated with karma believe what you want okay the eclipse as reality junkies we're always looking at this fake event or what is this or uh what is a politician what is donald trump who does he report to how much of a puppet is he? Who's the creature behind the curtain? All this stuff. It's all, we do too much of it while ignoring the eclipse. And a lot of you, or many of you, just don't understand what I'm saying. But the eclipse, we shouldn't do anything daily without considering the eclipse. Because I know most of you believe that, or, or see what I see and what others have talked about, that the chances of, of that happening the way they describe it, two celestial bodies moving exactly in front of each other to cast a shadow, you know uh, that it's so remote, you know, one, one in millions, and you know that, and you give it lip service, or we all give it lip service, but we truly don't understand the magnitude or the impossibility of what's happening, okay, impossible what's happening, practically impossible. Now, I don't mean that to most people they interpret that as almost impossible. No, pr like practicality. What is practical? It's imp it, and it is impossible. 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show that to you because it, it gets back to what's your threshold. And I know again everybody's going, well I, yeah, I know the chances of the eclipses. But it's it's unless you've really thought it through and considered all aspects of what they say is happening. It, you might think the impossibility is this, and it's this like down to Florida. It, it is, it's beyond an order of magnitude impossible. And once, w once we stop giving lip service to the fact that, um, yeah, what Carl Sagan is happening can't be happening, and we we will parrot that in the truth community. But I'm not sure how many people truly believe that or buy that. And you need to buy that to then bring that something else is going on in the nature of reality itself to bring that that new set of glasses back to this world back to the fake shooting that might happen tomorrow in consideration of any of the shenanigans and nonsense that happens here so again I don't know maybe for a fourth of you you're gonna know every bit of what I'm about to say but I would still I would still say for for almost everybody in that fourth, uh, three fourths won't won't know everything of what I'm about to say. But for, even for that fourth, I would say almost all of you would never have truly, truly comprehended the magnitude or the impossibility of what they say is happening with the eclipse. So I'm going to do this as quickly as possible. This could go two hours, but but I have to do this quickly and move on and apply. Or try to apply whatever we learn about the eclipse to all the shenanigans that happen in our day-to-day -day reality breakdowns that happen here or happen in our backyard so it's not just one body per your perception on earth fitting exactly over another the moon fits exactly over the Sun like I've said before two quarters milled back to back from the exact same machine the chances of that I, I put it if I put it one in billions if what Carl Segman tells me about what that is is real. It's a, it's a, one body is just a 400 million nuclear reactions per second and uh, gas, gas uh, explosions and hydrogen, <laughs> helium and, and the other body is just a, a rock orbiting the Earth and Neil Armstrong and Buzzed Aldrin showed us that the the surface of the Earth is I mean the surface of the Moon is just like a cat litter box. Cats would love it. They'd scratch and they'd poop anywhere on the moon. It's three inches of beautiful cat litter. Gray is what they like. And um, it's just that, that rock just happens to go in front of the sun because by coincidence, by incredible coincidence from our th perspective of the third variable here on Earth in an equation that's already impossible, the sun is 400 times larger than the moon. And the moon just happens to be... 400 times closer to the earth so by our perspective as the third variable here on earth as observers they appear to be the exact same size as two quarters milled on the on the same machine back to back Matt I'm detecting your sarcasm good because I'm lagging on pretty thick it's from Tommy boy um, that by itself is absurd it's impossible um, but then you but but deliver all the other aspects into the equation that push one in billions into one in tens of billions or one in trillions the ecliptic itself now I'll describe it for a minute or two not everybody is, is up on, on what this is but if you Google or YouTube search go search with those monsters the uh, the animation of the solar system planets going around the Sun animation of the solar system planets he said it planets I'm not getting into that debate here that's obviously not the purpose here I have to assume in this, in using their own information against them, I have to assume the basis of their, use the basis of their own construct. See how, it, why I can't stray? Um, anyway, if you, the animation is, here's the sun. And the ecliptic, I'll explain this in, in a moment. For the, but, but all the planets go around the sun. I don't know if they go this way or that way. Who cares? They all go around in the same direction. Hmm. Why would they all go in the same direction if the unit, we have this random entropy chaos universe where originally the Big Bang just blowed up, it blowed up, and everything blowed up in the different, wouldn't things be shooting in different directions? So how are the planets going around in, you know, in the same direction? 
it's like a it's like a it's like a bad country music dance. They're all dancing around the same direction, but it's not just that. They go around on a flat plane called the ecliptic. The from our perspective, the ecliptic from our perspective. But if you look at the animation on using uh, one of the uh, one of the many uh, animation uh, or, or explanations on YouTube Google as to how our universe really works. They all go around on the same flat plane. It's not like some are going, woo, 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 and this one's Mercury's going, woo, and Jupiter's up here. And no, it's it's all in the same, like kneading dough. It's all in the same plane and all in the same direction. Right. Sure. What did they call each other? Did they call each other? Did Mercury go, I'm going first. I'm the closest. To, I don't want to be the only one going around like this on this level. Is anybody going to do what I'm going to do? I don't want to be the only one. And Mars and, and Jupiter are like, wait, little man, relax. We're going to do what you're going to do. You just go the way you want. We'll follow along on the same plane. You're not going to look like a, an asshole doing your own thing. We're going to follow along. Oh, goody. <laughs> and we, we can dress like each other tomorrow. You know, and, and um, I don't know if I've ever said this. It's the most craziest thing ever. But planets actually, if they called each other up to coordinate that amongst them, that's more believable than what Carl Sagan tells us and what these idiots like Stephen Hawking tell us about the nature of the universe. That's more believable that they called each other and planned it out. Okay, look, how would they go around in the same direction on the same level plane? Now, I'm sure you can go to the monsters at Google YouTube and find all the videos in the world, maybe from uh, my ex-girlfriend Vintage Space and creatures like that that'll explain it all to you with confidence as to how that's happening and people will listen and say, well they're they know more than me they have more more letters on their business card and more titles and more useless masters and phd degrees and oh I'm, I'm too stupid to question it so i'm just gonna it makes sense and they're delivering it with confidence so i better not question it well that's that's what they do they do they put big titles in their card they deliver the bullshit uh with confidence and they make you they belittle you and make you seem like you're not smart enough to question any of this stuff for yourself no if things are just if we're blowed up in the big bang going all over the freaking place and no it doesn't make sense they'd all be going and from our perspective the ecliptic is like one line even the moon now I'm, i haven't even got this is these are ones in billions of chances in my opinion i'm no statistician i slept through my quantitative business analysis class at penn state but um, I'm in a very condescending mood today for, for a few reasons, so I hope that's okay with you. Um, but uh, even I know that it's one in, one in billions that everything happens on this level plane. I haven't gotten even to the eclipse itself yet. You know, Pull out your pocket calculator and take a one in a billion and then times it by another one in a billion. You know, the, the, the probabilities, chance, flip a coin, 50-50, heads or tails, flip it again. The math is very simple. One half times one half. The chances of two heads in a row, 0.25. Well, do that five times with one in a billion, one in 10 billion, one in 20 billion, one in a billion. Well, it gets to be there's more zeros than almost any supercomputer can handle. That's what the eclipse is. And we're supposed to believe it. We're supposed to believe it is, is that it's exactly as they say it is. So then you have the variable of the moon itself. So we look in. Everything's on this ecliptic going round and round on this flat plane in the same direction. They all called each other. And then we have the moon. Well, was it the moon we were told? Uh, uh, the, the confident stories they deliver on uh, YouTube Google is uh, that, that the moon, uh, you know, it was a giant body like Mars smashed into the Earth after the formation of the initial solar system. So this is maybe hundreds of millions of years later, and all these rock and crap broke up. Now, they give you these confident explanations, but when you look into it closely, there is no consensus on how the moon was formed. Even amongst these mainstream egghead assholes, there's no consensus. That, but, I mean, if NASA will tell you how the moon formed, they're not going to tell you, uh, we're not quite sure. There's a note at the bottom saying, um, you know, four out of five dentists disagree with with the, with Mar they're not going to tell you a lot of people disagree but trust me there's no consensus nobody knows for sure how the moon was formed there are theories like darwin's theory of evolution can't lose the word theory in that it's so it's so given of what happened we came from monkeys that they can't detach from the word theory 
So um, a giant body like Mars, hopefully with Matt Damon not on it, um, smashed into uh, it's my computer. There we go. Smashed into the Earth, and all this rock and debris went all over the place. And um, if that was the case, well, we should have rings. We should have rings around. It would just, you know, if, if gravity exists and the graviton exists the way they describe it, they, they use one body of measure, the graviton, which doesn't exist, to measure another uh, phenomenon that they can't prove exists, gravity. Um, just because There's no proof anywhere in the world that gravity exists. Just because I can take a bowling ball and drop it on my foot, that doesn't mean gravity exists. It just means a bowling ball dropped when I, when I let it go. That's all they have, these egghead assholes. They're so smart in their university lectures. So um, you, you have, uh, I was going to say, the, the moon uh, came after the formation of the solar system, smashed all these pieces all over the place. So why don't we have, why don't we just have rings? Well, somehow this moon coalesced into one thing. For all these little parts and pieces and little pieces of whatever, well, how did it, how did it come together? In other words, if there's a million pieces or a trillion pieces of whatever from the collision of this huge body into the earth billions of years ago, where's the central point of gravity as they describe it? Where's the central gravitational force that pulls all the pieces together? And even if that's possible, why would all the pieces come together? in a perfect circle or a perfect sphere like just massaging the perfect snowball with warm hands why would that happen why wouldn't it look more like they describe a meteorite or an asteroid or a comet or like a you know look more like a a a, a potato that's been given too much radioactivity like a potato you planted outside a 3 mile island the potato might have like looked like it has three heads or something or all these different bulges all over why doesn't the moon look like that how could everything come together so perfectly to form that perfect sphere well matt it didn't come together it came together odd shaped like that radioactive potato you describe all the, and then over what over the millennia it was was it formed somehow that the cosmic winds shaved it down um is there a river up there like a like a way a river rock gets nice and smooth and round is that what happened to the moon if there's if it's a vacuum and there's no forces it whatever came together would be all over the place up and down left and right and if it came together as this perfect smooth I mean, how does that even happen? How could how does any scientist even ex- describe how it, it forms a perfect sphere? Where is the center point of gravity? Forget it. It, it. Okay, we'll leave that behind. It's nonsensical to me. I'm sure they'd find a way to argue with me about that. And obviously, I don't know everything. I'm just saying, well, even if I'm wrong about any of these, or what I'm calling a one in a billion chance is really not a billion a chance, once you add all of these up together per the law of probability, you still get a number that's way beyond anybody's threshold as to what they say is happening can't possibly be happening in all of this. So the, back to the ecliptic. The, everything's moving around on the same level plane. That's why things are getting in front of each other and blocking the light of the sun. Well, why would the moon care about that same level plane? Well, it's almost on that same level plane. It's within five degrees really so just this random event hundreds of millions of years later all this debris and then it goes around the earth please let it go it goes around the earth on the same level plane so everything's getting in the way of each other no if anything was real the moon would have just formed and gone around like this and there never would be an eclipse (laughs) i mean come on it's a freaking joke what they tell us a joke about almost everything so of course just at random as just add up your probabilities your another one in a billion um you know it, it just happens to be on that basically the same ecliptic so if you get back then you get into the chances that these bodies are the same size and again if it was a little bit off i wouldn't even be nobody would be focusing on the eclipse or i wouldn't be making this video but the key that goes above everything is when when one crosses over the other i know there are partial eclipses but when you have a total solar eclipse one is exactly the same size as the other exactly exactly blocking the other if you take into all the variables as to what they say is going on size of the earth size of the moon size of the of the sun distance trajectory whatever telemetry any variable you can think of uh, shape uh, 
motion, relative motion, if you take in all those variables, you get into one in tens of billions. Just the eclipse itself. That one body perfectly covers the other body up. Let's forget the ecliptic that you can add in another one in billions. Forget that they all move around the same direction. That's another one in billions. Forget that how the moon was formed. That's another one in billions. So you're looking at you're looking at at minimum, in my opinion. Again, I slept through my QBA class. Sorry. Minimum, it's approaching one in a trillion. Now I don't know what your threshold is, but I'm sorry. I don't believe in one in a trillion. <laughs> I don't really. I'll look for another explanation. Thank you very much. You know, if I, as I've said many times, if I get off the subway in New York and Brooklyn and come out, and there's some guy flipping, he's flipped 20 heads in a row. Whoa, heads again! Anybody want to bet me I can't do it again? 20 more times? Everybody, nobody's going to take the bet because it's beyond your threshold. He's a shyster. He's a charlatan. He's a flimflam man. But. The biggest flim-flam man of all time, the biggest fraud and charlatan and crook and liar of all time, your news anchor, probably, he's probably thinking about his next sex act, but sex act between each, each part of the, of, the, of the teleprompter he actually reads. He probably can't get, tonight I can get another sex act. He, that's probably all he cares about, guys like David Muir. They're the biggest crooks in the world. And so I'm going to believe when he tells me about a, I'm supposed to believe in a one in trillion coincidence. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm confident enough in my own cognitive abilities to look for truth somewhere else. Thank you very much. You know, thank you very much, David Muir, but uh, I'll pass. I'll pass uh, Carl Sagan on what you're, what you're telling me there. Sorry. You know, I wouldn't take the bet with a guy flipping 20 heads in a row or even 10, but I'm supposed to take your bet. That's one in a trillion. All these bodies are moving around exactly in an impossible fashion. And it gets back to my favorite. My favorite, um, when I say it's impossible, let me give you one example where you, you might, uh, there's still a, a small segment of people, you know, yelling at me in this video saying, over time, Matt, if you give it enough time and enough situations, anything is possible. And they'll cite that ridiculous example where if a monkey could talk, and he could just spout out words at random, just like, well, he, he doesn't know what he's saying, like, uh, banana, uh, zookeeper, television set, uh, scratch my ass, just any words. Eventually, over enough time, over maybe hundreds of billions of years, but over enough time, that monkey would eventually recite Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet perfectly, if enough time went by. And we sit in our statistics class and we go, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, if enough time, anything's going to happen like that. The monkey's going to say, yeah, <laughs> he's going to say, uh, um, two households, both alike in dignity and fair Verona, where we lay our scene from ancient grudge, break the new mutiny, blah, blah, blah. He's going to spout that off. The monkey's going to do it. And I'm saying to the, to the QBA professors and the statistical professors, I'm saying, no, that's impossible. I don't care what your little theories say about how much time goes by. The reason it's impossible is because each attempt stands on its own. Okay? Each it, the monkey's each attempt stands on its own. And the monkey cannot learn from prior attempts. So it doesn't matter how much time goes by. It, it, this is not... This is practically impossible, per the, the real definition of practicality. Not practically impossible, meaning almost. No. It's never going to happen. You could, you could watch the monkey for 40 million years, and the best he's going to do is like uh, um, two households, uh, both alike in, in dignity and fair banana, where we lay our scene. That's the best he's going to do. And the reason he's never going to do better than that is because he can't learn. No one's saying saying you got the first part right, but when you put in banana, then you got it wrong. Oh, okay. Then I'll two households both alike in dignity in motor oil where we lay our. He, he can just keep. He can learn if he can learn. Okay, all bets are off. He will eventually get it. Obviously, the statistical theories of the eggheads applies there. He will eventually learn, but not if each attempt stands on its own. At the end of whatever he's, let's say Romeo and Juliet is. Um, 40,000 words. I have no idea. At the end of the monkey spouting 40,000 words at random, 
they will he will push a button he's learned to get he gets food if he pushes the button and the button like those x's in family feud tell you if he got it right or got it wrong he says banana motor oil blah 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 and he pushes at the end at the okay you after after doing this for three hours he gets to push the button to get the little uh little piece of hot dog that he likes to eat he pushes the button it goes i got it wrong now if the monkey was smart enough he could say well what part did i get wrong can't tell you. you. Got to start over at random. See, that's why he'd never get it. I don't care how many trillions of years goes by. He'd never get it. So just like, who's the hottest uh, girl today that's 20-something years old? The ho- I don't even know. I don't follow it. To me, back in the day, it was like Cindy Crawford, you know, my my age, and uh, Heidi Klum. I mean, back in the day, I don't even know. But, but Matt, uh, in his late 40s, it doesn't matter how many times I approach that girl at a bar. Okay, I'm not going to score. I'm not going to be able to take her back to my uh, my Holiday Inn hotel room. It does it's each attempt stands on its own. Somebody says, "Well, Matt, if you're if you uh, theoretically if you had unlimited attempts for an unlimited number of years, eventually you'd score." No. No, I wouldn't. Well, after a few million years maybe, but you get the point. <laughs> you get the point. Um each attempt stands on its own. And then now, now think of the solar system. This is it's even worse. In the eggheads defending their theories versus people, conspiracy theorists, and all that means is people that actually decided to think for themselves. It gets worse for the eggheads because it's not like the universe had 400 million chances to get it right. Where oh, we finally got it right. One body fits exactly over, and we didn't get it right. It happened the first time. It'd be like the monkey. The first time you say, "Okay, monkey, this monkey can talk. He can just spout out random words, vocabulary. He's got the whole Webster's dictionary's vocabulary. He doesn't know what he's saying, but he spouts out words." It would be like. The first time the monkey saying, you know, two households both alike in dignity and fair Verona. Getting it right the first time. Yeah, okay. Now, obviously, most of you know most of this. But the point is, the sheer magnitude of the impossibility, which is our heavens, that slash dot dot dot, the eclipse, is magnitudes and magnitudes and magnitudes of zeros more impossible than you can possibly imagine. Therefore, it's nothing, in my opinion, is what, it's not planetary bodies, it's not, it's nothing going on like they say. Therefore, everything is on the table, other than what David Muir tells me, or what Anderson Cooper tells me. Everything is on the table other than that. Now that is at least something. We can cross off, you know, what's in the textbook and go from there. But... This does lead to an infinite number of paths, but but the people that I get most upset about in the truth community here, that after all I just presented, they're still gonna they're gonna mock people like me who keep on the table that we live in a hologram, matrix, simulation, holodeck, illusion, reality overlay, something that's completely not real at all. Rock isn't heavy, you know. There, there's a sliding scale of what is real here. Uh, things are physical. Or rock is heavy. What I'm seeing, I'm really seeing. What I'm hearing, I'm really hearing. There, um, it's it's real perception. It's not a faux perception of the senses. And then over here, you have this literally like the Matrix. We're in a pod, and everything's a projection. Cypher's trying to get back in. And there's that the sliding scale. So I'm I'm on this side. I don't know what's happening. I'm not saying to say this is exactly the Matrix, but I'm on this side. Things aren't quite real. But there's people up here, even in this truth community, that almost mock and laugh at those um, that type of conclusion that you must leave that theory on the table which is the height of ignorance is beyond ignorant to, to you might say you might say I don't agree but I understand why that must be on the table though they just they don't even keep it on the table and they almost mock and laugh that is really really pathetic for, for people to be doing that in this community no matter what you think that God would never do it or it, it doesn't by the way this even if you're a hardcore simulation theory it's nothing to you could be a, the most hardcore evangelical Christian in the world. Who's to say God didn't create it that way? Does it say in the Bible a rock must be real, physical, and hard? And it, no, maybe still God could have created it that way a, a fluid reality, some sort of a holographic reality for souls to have an experience on. And the, whatever you consider the devil or Satan hijacked it. It's not much different than, than you know, you, you can. It's not like you're jumping off the Christian bandwagon by thinking that. I don't. I don't see one is not, um, you know, ex- mutually exclusive to the other. If I'm saying that right. Um, 
anyway, so you kind of got to get your head around as to what's going on with all that stuff to come back down to earth here and say, well, what's this fake shooting all about? Or who did George Bush really report to? And all you can't, I don't, you can't have this little myopic trying to figure out reality down here without bringing in the, the big, the big guy, you know, the big, huge event that happens is going to, Oh, we had one seven years ago. It's going to happen again in seven years. You know, what, come on chances of that. It's just add another billion to your probability calculation. So, you gotta and what's so what's you gotta get your head around that first, okay, and then bring those what you believe there down into the weeds of what we look at day to day here and all the shenanigans on the world news. Um, gosh, there was a few other things I wanted to say. Um, I don't know. It's hard to talk that long. It really is. Um, and I'm sure I had a few things I'll, I'll carry forth going forward, but, um, it's just too big of an event and people in the weeds down here trying to figure out reality. Don't, they'll forget about it, almost entirely forget about it. And it has to be the elephant in the room of, of any sort of discussion we have as to the nature of reality, because it, it either reveals a ton or at least, at least creates a situation where you can cross off a lot of stuff okay you know Carl Sagan tell me what's going on there no I'm crossing all that off I don't I'm sorry what's your threshold it's to me once you get into one in billions I'm sorry I'm I'm gonna look for my answer somewhere else thanks for watching hey guys Matt um, this is my truck driver shirt it looks like <laughs> somebody tuning in is gonna go this this truck driver is gonna tell me about the nature of reality yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, first, before I want to talk about the eclipse, and um, for all us reality junkies, it, it's we get away from it too often. I mean, it is the starting point, the middle point, and the ending point. It should be of everything we do or consider 